Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, bucks, Got things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Man, got a radio show because God is in the blessing business. I just happen to be a recipient. I just happen to got a couple of things right. Um, And man, his grace and mercy carries you the rest of the way. All you got to do is get a couple of things right, and then his grace and his mercy will take over. His favor, his love of you, it's it's already evident. I mean, you know, because so many times we go along without even acknowledging him or conferring with him in our decisions, and, and we look up and we find ourselves in a predicament, and he always comes comes to the rescue. He always manages to show up. He's never too late. He's never one minute too late. And so uh, in light of this today, I wanted to talk to you about something. I, I, it's, it's another principle of success um, that I'd like to share with uh, everybody this morning. And once again, these are not things that you don't know or you've never heard before. These are just reminders along the way. And one of the things you have to be conscious of is, Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. See, I I have a theory. Don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. You know, everything changes. Nothing remains the same. Nothing. And change is inevitable. Now, you could participate in the change or you can react to the change. Are you following me? You can participate in the change or you can react to the change. But don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. Now, what I mean by that is this. In participating in the change or reacting in the change, there is a difference. See, if you react to the change, that means the change has occurred and now you have to make the necessary adjustments to the change. Example, the boss walks in, you think your job is good, the boss walks in and hands you a pink slip. That right there, that's a change. Now, you didn't participate in this change because you didn't ask for the pink slip, but now you got to react to the pink slip. Whenever you have to react to the change, it's an adjustment period. It almost throws you off. So change is going to come. 
It always does. You can participate or you can react. Or let's say your boss comes in and hands you the pink slip and you said, you know what? I've been preparing for this day. Always knew nothing lasts forever. I've been working on the sideline on the business idea I had. And I had or I had several other applications in around town. I was just holding off to see what was going on. Go on. So when they hand you the pink slip, the transition, the adjustment you make is a lot more smooth the transition. Because now you just transition into your new business idea that you've been working on. Are you transitioning to the apps you already had in or the contacts you made? The preparation for when the day they come in and hand you the pink slip. Well, Steve, what if they surprise you with it? This is just one example I'm giving you. So, you know, let's let's not nitpick the message. So what I'm saying to everybody is don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. So many people are stuck in a rut because of your, our refusal to change. I was hell bent on a certain thing going a certain way, and this is how it was going to go. Well. That that I was thinking didn't really fit. Now, in my own personal experience, this may not be yours, but in my own personal experience, the things that I've had the most trouble letting go of was something I wanted. When I line myself up with the will of God to ask God what he wanted for me, you understand, those things came a lot more easy to me. Because it was in the will of God. It was what God wanted me to do, too. Okay, see, what you mean by that? Okay, here we go. When things were going wrong in in relationships for me, what I did was the biggest mistake I've ever made was I attempted to fix what was wrong in my relationship outside of the relationship. Feel me? Okay. So I'm out there working my groove like I want to. Well, now, guess what? There's a cause and effect for all of that, too. Your house ain't going to get better. It can't. And then that leaves room for some other things. And so now, when the change come, guess what? I got to react to it now. I got I to gotta, I gotta have a reaction to it. Had I lined myself up in the will of God, the transition may have gone differently. It could have still ended the relationship, but guess what? Some of the pain I was in, I ain't had to go through. I bought a lot on myself. Sometimes you're pursuing a passion of yours. And what God really wants you to do is pursue your gift. So now you're pursuing your passion, right? You're passionate about golf. You love golf so much, you just determined. But now you done messed around. You ain't made it on the PGA Tour yet, and you 45 still talking about, I'm going to play on the PGA Tour. Really? Okay. Maybe you ain't as good as this you think, or maybe you're not as gifted as you think. Maybe you're pursuing a passion. Sometimes, man, we have to change, and we have to ask God what is his will. His will is much simpler. It's a simpler road. Not going to be easier. It's simpler. See, when I wake up now, It's simple for me to wake up because I know there are a few things that I have to do. I have to click this mic on. I have to be positive. I have to be inspirational. I have to be informative. I have to be uplifting. Got it. That's what he wants. All I got to do is sit down, close my eyes, ask God to help me be who he wants me to be. And for the most part, he tell me what to say. Now, guess what he's done, though, to create this in me? I went through enough things in my life. I had enough challenges. I made plenty of mistakes. So I, now, at my age, I can turn around and tell somebody listening to me, okay, this is what I did. This is a mistake I made. Maybe you see yourself in this story right here. Maybe you don't have to go this way. Or this is what I've learned about becoming successful. Here's a principle that I learned. But then, guess what? I had to be unsuccessful to get it, though, didn't I? So you can't have a testimony without a test. Change is coming. It's inevitable. You can participate or you can react. I much prefer to participate in the change. All right, let's go.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I got it for you. I got it for you. If you've been waiting on it, here it is. It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Period. Coldest show in the world. You have other choices. You have other things you can do in the morning. The only place you can do this here is right here. This it. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Bet. Shirley Strawberry, <laughs> Carla Pharrell, that girl out of Mississippi called Mississippi Monica. Boy, this boy right here. Kill Spates. Yeah. Learning on the job, Junior. <laughs> And the legend that is nephew Tommy. It is. Well, yeah. Junior, what's on your mind? Yeah. Uh, let me let me just ask you something. Uncle. I Still. know you, you you you've been you for a very long time, sixty five years. You know how you is. Yeah. Do you ever just want to just not be you and just start cussing everybody out? Have you ever just wanted that? What? Well, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. I know have I, I ever just, wanted to just not be me and start cussing somebody out? Yeah, just not be the celebrity well, Steve see, Harvey. I, obviously, you don't really know me. Uh, <laughs> You've been cussing. You still uh, apparently. I, yeah, not. I, <laughs> well, it, it used to be a resolution to stop cussing. <laughs> uh, I remember that day you tried to do it. Yeah, I, I had <laughs> Head on my day. I've, I've given that up so many times. I don't even apologize for it no more, Junior. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I meant it. <laughs> Didn't I, we I have a money jar at one time? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We had a what? money jar for cussing. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. the jar was filled after the first day. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Full of twenty. Tried to do it on the air, Steve, and it didn't work. Oh man, come on! No, I'm not. I'm not. I've just decided, and that's how I am now. If you don't like cussing and everything, and you judgmental about people who cuss, I understand where you're coming from. Don't. You don't have to cuss. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you right now. Me personally. Yeah. I recommend it. Mm. Stress reliever. It's therapeutic. Girl, I, know. I don't have ulcers. I don't have high blood pressure, hypertension. I ain't got none of that stuff, man. I ain't got. I, I ain't. I ain't. I ain't got chronic illnesses. You know, I had. I had none of that, man. I ain't bipolar. You don't have none of that. You know why? Cause yeah. I let it out. Yeah. It's not. It's not. I don't give it time to fester in me. Mm. I'm not sitting around. I'm not bitter. No, yeah. I I don't, I don't hold grudges, cause the <laughs> moment we have the grudge, I'm gonna get it to you. Mm-hmm. That way I ain't got to hold it. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm living my yeah. life, and it's it's okay. And after this birthday right here, okay. I'm telling you, man, I'm just more settling who I am. And if you do not like me, it's okay, man. It's okay. Most people I've, that I discovered don't like me, I immediately start disliking their ass. And we <laughs> eat. <laughs> we ain't got to do Angela. this no more. Oh, man, that ain't no problem. No, that's what we're doing. Cool. Well, we like you, Steve. We like you a lot. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you. Coming up at 32 <laughs> minutes you. after the hour. Yeah, thank you, girl. <laughs> the nephew is here with Run That Prank thank Back. You. We'll get into it right after this. Thank you, girl. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, it's time for the nephew to run that prank back. They moved Big Mama. That's what they did. (laughs) They moved Big Mama. Cat dog, if you would. Cleaning service. I'm trying to... Can I speak to the owner of the company? This is he. Is this Robert? You, the owner is Robert. Is this Robert? Y- yes, sir. This is. This is Mr. Robert. How can I help you? My name is Carruthers. Y'all, y'all clean. Y'all clean my uh my my house last week. Uh, okay. <laughs> and when y'all moved the furniture to clean the carpet, somebody somebody moved my grandmother off the coffee table. And she's not in there no more. Hold, 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 hold on one second for me, sir. Do you know what, what day did we clean your house on, sir? Last Wednesday. Y'all clean my you house. You said we came to your house on Wednesday of last week. What, what's your address, sir? Big Mama! 
is 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 okay. Is Big mouth. <laughs> Big mouth. <laughs> oh, sir. Hello. You said your name is Carruthers, and we came to your house on Wednesday. If you don't mind, can I have your address, please? Yo. <laughs> Big mama. <laughs> Big mama. Oh, okay, Mr. Carruthers, listen. If 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 we if your grandmother now was your grandmother laying on the carpet? I mean, my guys don't move people, sir. Uh, we would not have moved my not grandma. My grandma, she was on the she was on the coffee table. Her her urn was on the coffee table. Oh, my okay. grandmother passed. Oh. Bethany laid. Oh. Y'all and somebody moved her, and now the vase is still there, but. The ashes is... <laughs> okay, 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 I'm sorry. So you're saying that you're... Oh, Big mama! Big mama! Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Mr. Grubb, I am so sorry. Uh, listen, I, I just lost Big. my grandmother not too long ago, sir. I, I know how you feel. I, now, 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 listen, my guys would not have knocked over a, a vase or something like that, or they would have told me if they uh, knocked over something. Are you sure that it was my cleaning service? Yeah, I ain't have. No, nobody had no two different carpet cleaning services to come by in the same week, man. Y'all the only ones came by there. Y'all the ones that did it. Y'all the ones that moved my grandmama. And now my grandmama go. Mr. Carruthers. My grandmama go, man. Mr. Carruthers, I'm sorry about that, but if you would give me your address, I can confirm that that actually was my cousin that came by you. I'm, I apologize, sir. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry. Big mama. Oh, big mama. Big mama. Oh, oh I'm so sorry, sir. Now, if you, can you please just give me your address, sir? Let me let me pull some information up in my system, and we can we can straighten all this out. Uh, uh, hold, hold on for one second, please. Uh, baby, do, do do me a favor. Go and ask Wayne and Robert Jr. to come in here for a second. They had to be the ones to clean that man carpet on last week. Hold on, sir. Somebody knocked over his grandma on her now. You Big Mama! <laughs> Come in here now. Big Mama been there. She been on that coffee table for Church 10 years. She been on that coffee table for 10 years. And now y'all y'all sure. done nothing. Mr. Carruthers, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to find out if... if, if you know what? Just, <laughs> when I get myself together, uh -huh. I'm going to come down there and I'm going to kick some... At that damn place of yours, you hear me, Mr. Carruthers? Now, now listen. I'm gonna do everything that I can to help you, but now don't, don't. Uh, you're not gonna threaten me on this phone. I just said you, you move my grandma, and I'm, I'm gonna move you now. You hear me? I'm, a, I promise you, I'm gonna tell everybody not to use this damn carpet cleaning service because y'all don't hey, know what the hell y'all no, 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 hold, hold the hell on. Now, li listen. Now, now, uh, it, it took me a long time to get my services together, sir. And we do a real good job. Now, you're not going to threaten me. Y'all move people's sure. grandmama. That's what y'all do. You move people's grandmama. <laughs> we, sir, we have never had this kind of incident. As a matter of fact, we haven't had any incidents at all. So, Big mama. Again, I'm, I'm going to do everything mama. that I can. I, I'm sorry about your grandmother, sir. We're going to get everything I'm squared away from you. I'm going to get an ad in the newspaper and tell everybody not to use this damn service. I promise Look, you that. I done told you once. Now, you're not going to threaten me about my damn company no more. You understand me? I'm, you're not going to put no ad in no newspaper, and you're not going to sit there and tell me what you're going to do. I done called my sons in here. I done called my nephew in here. They're the only ones that clean that guy doggone carpet. Now, I'm going to find out what happened, but you're not going to threaten my company. You understand? This is how I make my living. Now, I don't know how you make your living, but this is how I make my living. You don't living. make y'all living by moving people's grandmamas, man. You move my grandmama. My grandmama ain't on the coffee table no more. Sir, sir, it's, I'm sorry that your grandmama not on your coffee table no more. Look. I'll try to find out what happened. We're going to get this fixed for you, but you got to work for me. You ain't got, well, I'm coming down you. there right now to do damn office and start kicking some right. Have your boys there and have your there too. No, you, you, oh, you're going to come down here. Come on, well, bring your Come on down here right now. I'm not scared of you, man. You're not, I'm trying to help you, and you want to go off on me like that, bro? I don't give a Matter of fact, come on down here right now. You won't give me even your address. I don't even know where you are. Man. I don't even know if we can go out. I promise you, I'm whooping your boys and your Cause y'all done move my grandma. You move my grandmother, man. Let me tell you bro. Mr. Carruthers, don't threaten me or don't threaten me about my boy. Now, that's my son. I don't take that too lightly. I will come personally to your house right now, beat your ass, and then come back and clean your house for free. Do you understand me? Don't you threaten my children, and don't you threaten me. Let me get off my damn phone. Oh, I got one more thing I want to tell you, man. What? Is you listening? What is it, man? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your wife, dog. <laughs> 
Hello? Say Hello? Hello? Say <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> Ethel, don't, um, I'll be, just, don't worry about it. That, 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 wasn't, that wasn't nobody. That's just Tommy, man, you ain't right, dog. Man, you ain't right. You called me, Tommy. <laughs> now, you got my sons in the looking like like nothing did something. I'm going to go bust up and find their head, man. You going to tell me what you going to do with my cousin, man. You know how long it's been, so I had my cousin started, man. You wrong for that, Tommy. Oh, God. You wrong, man. Hey, man, Robert, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is? What is the baddest, and I'm talking about the baddest, radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show <laughs> player, man. I listen to y'all every morning, man. Give it to me, people. Give it to me, Give it to me, All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time for something funny. Um... Inviting a date, uh, Steve, back to your home is certainly a big step, you know, in the relationship when you've moved it on to that level. Uh, And as you can imagine, there are definitely things that you can do to make sure that visit leaves a lasting impression. And I'm talking about in a good way, okay? For example... For men to go to a woman's home, uh, definite turn-ons include a nice-smelling home. Everyone likes, you know, when you walk mm-hmm. in, the house smells good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, books on display, things like that. Um, while for women, if you visit, a, if we visit a man's house, we again like a nice-smelling home. Also, um, a man having like family photos on display and even a doormat before you even get inside the house. Um, so, Steve, Tommy, and Junior, I have to ask you, what things turn you on and turn you off when you visit your date's home for the first time? Think back, guys. Ooh, that hair around mm-hmm. that sink. <laughs> You're in the bathroom already? Yeah. When I go to the bathroom, I see all that hair on that sink. <laughs> that gets on my nerves. But you don't want us about leaving the toilet seat down. Uh. Get this hair up <laughs> from around the sink. That's a turn off. I do. <laughs> Woo. Come on, Tommy, what you got? That pregnancy test that's in the trash can. That oh. right there, that, <laughs> that kind of bothered me. You know what I'm saying? What, what are you in there trash? for? I, I goes in trash, <laughs> medicine cabinets. I gets in all that. <laughs> I want to know what's wrong with you. All right. Come on, Steve. <laughs> back, well, back in the day. <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking, you know, I like a woman's house mm-hmm. that's clean. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's walk it. In, that is number one for me. And your house be clean. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. If your house nasty mm-hmm. and I'm over here for the first time and we're looking at first impressions, uh-huh. my impression immediately is you nasty. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be. Yeah. I mean, if you ain't got enough sense to put your best foot forward on the first date. First date, yeah. So I like a woman's house who's first of all clean. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Now, fellas, when she come over your house, she has the right to expect the, the same, same thing. Thank you. Yes, sir. That your house is clean. Absolutely. Febreze. Get a can. <laughs> Go through the Febreze hide garbage smell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, men have a tendency, men, men's house a lot of times be a little stale. Cause men don't know. Mm-hmm. They don't. They, you're right about that. Here's a, a suggestion I have for men. If you're gonna have a woman over your house, hide your medicine. Your medicine? Your medicine. <laughs> put it up. Don't, don't put what it. Kind of you can't medicine? explain medicine all the what time. What did you own? <laughs> yeah, if you got any medicine, hide it. I don't care if it's Celebrex. Most yeah. people don't know what that is. Excuse me, sound real close to, you know, yeah. like VD. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Anything start with Cella. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to sell it. You got to put that up. Claps. Can we just say, just have a clean, good-smelling house? Can we just say that? No, you need Mm-mm. to get the medicine to you. Because <laughs> no, you can't explain this to people that's out of your house. Because most medicine you can't pronounce anyway. <laughs> no. So oh, what is this it. Anatavia in your cabinet? <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's that sounds real. Sick. I don't know no damn Anastasia. I said Anatavia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yogurt. <laughs> what? Activia. It's in your medicine cabinet. You don't even know what it is because right. you can't pronounce your own medicine. Mm. 
this is crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is you so. taking testosterone for? <laughs> 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 that ain't none of your doing. She just coming out she, with a whole she bunch just of saw it. bottles. She just saw it. <laughs> what is you taking testosterone <laughs> for? Ain't no breast is hanging, though. <laughs> yeah. She come out there, you done bought some Chinese remedy. She come out. What is black cat? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Steve, didn't you say, though, that this girl you were dating was so gorgeous and you went over her house and she had roaches or something? Didn't you tell yeah. us a story about yeah. that? Yeah, I've told yeah. that story, but I yeah. did another one one time. Uh-huh. I met this girl from Louisiana in college that was gorgeous. Uh-huh. I didn't know how to talk to her. My brother helped me. Oh, your older Finally, brother. we went out. Mm-hmm. My brother sent me a little bit of money. I had a little money. It was a Creole restaurant, and I let her order. Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy, man. This this heifer ordered so much spicy food. <laughs> I'm just eating. Head sweating. I'm digging under my arm. I'm in there, man, purse frying so hard. So I'm dropping her off at her at her mama house. Okay. Now, my stomach was cutting up. Uh-oh. Now my mama always Bubble told guy. me. Get home. When you got to go to the bathroom, just, just go on home. Boy. Yes. Yes. Lord. No candies in nobody's house. Uh-uh. But the girl said, my like mama and I'm not home. Why don't you come on in for a little while? I, 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 I'm going to say no. But you are you got bubble guts. You got bubble guts, though, no? Did you you ain't seen I that. heard I heard what you said, though. I know why you went in there. I Creole, hear what you said. Fine say. as hell. Come on in. I just said, okay, well, let me just yeah. go on in for a little while. Uh-huh. We sitting on the couch watching TV. I can hear my stomach. Oh, that is just the worst. Just doing flips. Uh-huh. So I said, excuse me, uh-huh. can I use the bathroom? Uh-huh. She said, it's straight down the hallway, second door on the left. Oh, God. I go in there, and Lord have mercy. Sorry if you're eating The breakfast. walls of Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Coming the down. walls of Gibraltar. <laughs> That's I done grabbed the tile rack in front of me yeah. to just try to hang on. I'm twisting the guest tile in my hand like I'm wringing it out. I done knocked the toilet tissue holder off the wall. Screws out everything. Wait, yeah. I done kicked over the trash can. You yeah. can hear this, right? Yeah, you, you I don't can, hear it. Uh-huh. You're telling she the bathroom wasn't off. feeling what I was feeling. Uh-huh. But I'm using the bathroom so much. God. That is alarming to me. Yeah. <laughs> you. I've actually put okay. more in there than I've ever put in there in my life prior to. I yeah. think we got the oh, picture. We it got up. it. We yeah. got I didn't know. It you, that, that, don't stop my story, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> this is for Junior and Tommy. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so I'm filling the bowl up. So finally I'm done to my relief. Oh. I'm, but I'm sweating, though. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm in there. Man. You got your shirt. I'm talking about shirt wide open. <laughs> I had unbuttoned my whole shirt. It's wide open. I had hung my pants up on the back of the so door. Because yeah. yeah. I, I use the bathroom like my daddy. I always hang my pants and drawers up on the back That's of the door. Because like I come out to the Yeah. That, you don't ever do use the bathroom. But I got my shirt on. But I didn't open it up because it's hot. I got just just water coming down out the front. So I stand up and I flush the toilet. Uh-oh. Now I'm putting my clothes on, but you know how you're waiting to hear that sound? Yeah. Uh-huh. That yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I don't gone. hear it's gone. The swoosh. Yeah. All I hear is the swirling. Oh. And I turn around and the and it's rising. <laughs> Rising? Oh my God! Now I'm asking God oh to not God. to do this to me today. Oh I know you praying. Steve. I'm asking God, oh don't God. not today, Lord. Part two, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Just catch up. <laughs> I'm over this fine girl house, stomach yeah. toe up, then mm-hmm. ate Creole food, 17, should have went home to use the bathroom, like sat in her house because she fine. Now I'm in here using the bathroom and all hell done broke loose in here. Come on, I'm boy. in here naked, sitting on the toilet with just my shirt on because I like to sit wide legged. <laughs> 
I like to be open and free. And I need it because I had to brace myself a couple times. But she never came in there to knock on the door to check. No, anywhere. not yet. She oh. coming. That's coming in the store. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I get up. I finally get through. But I've noticed that I've put more in the bowl than ever before. Oh, no! So I'm a little bit concerned with their sheer volume. Uh-huh. So I flush the toilet as I'm putting my pants back up on me. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm waiting to hear that. Yeah. But I don't hear it. And I look back, and it's rising. Oh, Lord. And it's just Lord, going Lord. in a slow circle. Oh, so I go in, I go to my Heavenly Father. Right. He, say, Father he, God. He, he, pray on this roll, boy. Pray on this roll. Not now, Lord. Pray all at all. Stop this rising tide. Well. Somehow, don't let this swirl get up by the top. But he didn't hear me that day. Yeah. I guess it was a lesson. It's a lesson. So next thing I know. It's at the very top of the toilet. Oh my God. And it's oh about gosh. to flow over. Oh, oh. So now I don't know what to do. Uh-uh. So I look down and it's a trash can. Oh, oh man. So I dip the trash can down in it. Oh. And I got a trash can full of it. Yeah. Oh. So I pull the shower curtain back <laughs> and throw it in the bathtub. <laughs> But here comes some more. Oh, God. So I had to take another trash can full of it and throw another trash can in the bathtub. Oh, and here comes some damn more. So now I realize they toilet is broke. Oh, you they toilet is broke it. and backed up. And it started going back down. Oh, you so then I say, I got to get some water and put it in here. So yeah, I started no. running water in the... Oh, trash can to, to pour oh. it down there and make the water go clean. Uh-huh. Right, so right, I finally right. did that. Yeah. And I said, thank you, Lord. Uh-huh. And I looked over. Uh-huh. The damn bathtub is trifling. <laughs> so now I cut these people shower on. Yeah. Uh-huh. These people. And I'm washing down the walls, uh-huh. yeah. the shower curtain with the shower. The girl comes up to the door because I've been in here now about 45 minutes. Whoa! Oh, oh, I'm clean up for a long time. So she said, You okay in there? Everything fine. This ain't going good. She said, It sounds like something wrong in there. Get away from the door. <laughs> She said, Well, okay. It's my house. Oh, so I'm in there. Oh. Is this too late? But I noticed they got a candle in the bathroom. Oh. I light it. Oh, I light worse. the candle, start yeah. striking matches and running tap water. Okay. That's what my mom always told me. Strike some matches and run some tap water. Uh-huh. It'll help you get rid of odor. Okay. So okay. I'm in there. But now I'm washing down shower curtains, walls, <laughs> the bathtub, getting it's up it's stuff it. off the floor. <laughs> I'm just in here. Now, now, you probably say, Steve, what is you washing it down with? Yeah, yeah. that's what we're well, probably saying. Well, there wasn't no paper towels in there. Uh-huh. But that towel rack that I had grabbed when I first sat down and was twisting it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They guess towels. <gasps> the pretty ones no, with the lace no. and the flowers <laughs> you and the Yeah, with the initials on it. Yeah. 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 That's what I washing it down with. Not my good towels. My- that is towel is brown. Because <laughs> oh, I can't rinse it all out. Because it would have What color was it when it started? Pink. <laughs> They was pink. This is awful. Now this the is- towels is running. I done washed all the walls down, everything. I'm in there sweating. You working. My ass been on a construction site. You are you working. working uh-huh. So been- I've been in there total about damn near an hour. Uh-huh. So I pull, I fasten my clothes. I look at the bathroom. I got everything up. Uh-huh. But I got this big nasty ass towel, uh-huh. and I don't know uh-huh. what to do with it. Uh-huh. So I take it, put it in the waste paper can that I've been bailing with uh-huh. and mm-hmm. stuck all that under the sink. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I figure this ain't finna be good no how. Huh? Yeah. But at least when they come in here, they go, it's gonna take a moment of, cause I know when you go in there, you gonna have to say, what the hell yeah. happened yeah. in here? Cause I couldn't remember how the shower curtain was or none of that. Uh, uh. And I got, I look, I'm telling you, I got everything off. Right, right. So I walk down the hallway. Uh-huh. She's sitting on the couch with an attitude. Of course she has yeah. an attitude. Her arms folded. Yes, Then she looked at me and she said, why you been in there so long? Right. I, said, I had a little accident. Then she said, 
Oh my God, <laughs> look at you. Uh-huh. What was wrong? I didn't realize. <laughs> Uh-uh, uh-uh. But I know you like When I was bailing oh, all God. that mess into the shower, it was splashing oh, on my pants below my knee. God. I ain't had time to look at this because I'm on too busy cleaning up their damn house. Now, I look down. It's just specks oh, God. and splash marks of oh, mess from my geez. knee down. My pants was trifling. <laughs> I looked at her, she looked at me and she said, oh my God, look at you, what have you been doing? Uh-huh. What did you say? I looked at her and said, you ain't got to talk to me like that. <laughs> and walked out the front door and slammed her. Never came back. Ain't been when he man that. got in my car, had to ride home with all my windows down. Because I stink. I smell like a skunk. Sitting oh. in that car. Oh, God. And drove yeah. home. Yeah. And ne- that girl saw me on the campus next day, and all her girlfriends was looking at me. I act like I had never met her. <laughs> and that was my sure. Steve Harvey's. Wow. Trapped. Trapped in, in the, the bathroom. bathroom. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for a round of Would You Rather Out the Gate. You want to pick it blindly? Nah, that don't work out yeah. for us. <laughs> I loved it. It. <laughs> it, it. it hasn't for me, that's for sure. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> All right. Would you rather work and you're cleaning up toxic waste or would you rather work as a mortician's assistant? Yeah, I'm going to clean up the toxic waste. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Really? Dead. I'm, yeah, I don't I'm dead waste. people. Uh, no, no. I'm going down that damn funeral hall. I'm not yeah, in that waste. Yeah, I'm not in that waste. Right. I'm sorry. You know, what? you talk, talk toxic waste. They just talking about toxic material. They're not talking about like sugar, honey, iced tea. Not that. Because I have toxic waste myself. <laughs> you familiar with it? I'm very familiar with that. So I'm, I'm accustomed yeah. to that. I deal with toxic yeah. waste every time I go in there. Oh, gosh. I know, I know them here well, mine toxic. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so I'm not even going. I'm not. That's not a fear of mine. I'm just I've assisting been around... the mortician, though, right? No, I'm not yeah, cutting, cutting vacuuming out no body, sucking out no guts. No. I'm not going to do none of that. No, they ain't doing that. No, I'm just going to glue your eyes shit? shut, put no yeah. lipstick on you. I'm you ain't going to do that, though, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just dead. <laughs> quit playing. You ain't yeah. changing no clothes or nothing, huh? No, no. Same I'm outfit the same on. outfit he died in. Oh I'm going to be the worst mortician. I'm not doing all that. Yeah. The people yeah. he, looks, the he looks so swollen. Yeah, oh, that's how they brought him in. Yeah, <laughs> he looked decomposed. Hey, yeah, that's hey, that's how they brought him in. He got a, he got a yeah. Pepsi in his hand. Oh he still gonna have that's, everything. That's he how had. they brought him in. Car keys, are, <laughs> car keys gonna be in there. Why is all this mud under his fingernails? That's how they brought him <laughs> in. Did you even close his eyes? So at least that, he know. was eyes was open when they brought him in. <laughs> We not doing all that. I'm not Why embalming. Why at the funeral looking at us, though? No, none that? of that. Y'all closed casket, I told you. <laughs> the sandwich he was eating, I could go be in his hands, go be in the casket. <laughs> you are crazy. All right. Uh, the family is here you, to see I remember when I bought him that sweatshirt. Thank, thank you. <laughs> be grateful. All right, one more if we can get to it quickly. Uh, would you rather get struck by lightning or picked up by a tornado? <laughs> we know what your answer is, Tom. Struck by lightning or picked up by a tornado? Hey. Mm-hmm. Oh Don't my! How far I got to do? Yeah. How far? How yeah. far does tornado take him? Yeah. You don't know. Tornadoes, they yeah. are unpredictable. Yeah, I don't know what that's going to be, but I tell you what, when you get hit by that lightning, you usually don't be right when you come to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm that's today's that. round of Would You Rather. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time for Comedy Roulette. Jay, set it up quickly, please. Comedy Roulette is each week you guys test our ability to be comedians. We're going to show you how good we are. You give us a subject, stop the wheel on any subject. We can do a riff on it. That's how good we are. What All right, you Kat, you ready with what the wheel? Got? Let's what go. Got? What you got? These are the subjects. Number one, mm. ice cream. Okay, ice cream. Yeah. Number two, mm-hmm. old music. 
Oh yeah, like we back in the day. Yeah. Come on, yeah. come on, boy. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, the, I'm, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. All right, number three: How to protect the food in the fridge. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's a pretty yeah. good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, number four: I'm not the bank. Oh, oh that's yeah. Heard that before. Let's do that, do that one. one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, time. number five: Sometimes I feel like slapping the mess out of you. Look at you. Give me the last two. Yeah. All right, come on, Kat. Let's go. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Oh, come on, slapping, slapping, slapping. <laughs> oh, slapping a mess out of you. Uh, okay, how to protect the food in the fridge. That's your one. Oh, That's your one. So people don't steal it. Uh-huh. Easy, uh-huh. very okay, easy. let's go, Jay. First one is you pick your teeth till they start bleeding, right? And then you bite your sandwich and wrap that in cellophane and shove that back in there. I'll be damned if anybody eat that. With blood on it. With yeah. blood on it. Pick your teeth real good. Till they start. No, till they bleeding, right? Till they start bleeding. Bleed. Bite your sandwich. And then bite your sandwich. Wrap that in cellophane. Ew. See if it don't be there when you get back. Gingivitis. Oh, my God. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, come on, Junior. What you got? Or... <laughs> First of all, who fridge we talking about? There ain't nothing in mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to protect my fridge. I ain't got nothing in there. A better subject would have been how to put food in the fridge. <laughs> all right, tell me what you got, man. Uh, when you really want to protect something, you, uh, uh, th- what I would do, Okay. Put get a Ziploc bag. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. All right, and write. Let's see where we at. We in we in seventeen. Put one one seventeen on there. <laughs> All right, January first, seventeen. Yeah, and then get what? And then write chitlins on the ziplock. Yeah. And then write, don't that. throw away. Put that in. The, I, I promise yeah. you, ain't nobody bothering. That's you. a keeper. Yeah. All right, come on, Steve. Hey, what you got, man? The best way to protect your sandwich at work uh-huh. is mm-hmm. to put it in a cellophane and then duct tape it. <laughs> <laughs> they get tired. So they don't even know what it is. But duct tape the whole sandwich. <laughs> How you going to get back in there? <laughs> the whole sandwich. Is... It the just whole... look just a brick or duct tape in there. Ain't nobody going to open up that damn duct tape. <laughs> duct tape goes with everything, but not food. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Yes, not yes, food. Duct yeah. tape. Right. Duct tape That's will protect, protect So that'll sandwich. protect it, yeah. Yeah, put it in and let it stand there for a long time. All right. Oh, How man. to protect the food in the fridge, Jay? Oh, the best way to do it is you can put it way inside. You can put it inside. Pretty sure you smash it up. Uh-huh. You take your sandwich and you ball it up real tight. Okay. Just as, th- as small as you can make it. And put it <laughs> and wrap it in cellophane and then stick that inside the baking soda box. Put it inside <laughs> The bacon you got a balled up yeah, sandwich. A balled up it. sandwich. Like a nugget. But, but, like a, that's what I'm talking about. But it will be there when you get home. Uh, it'll it be, it, it be protected. It'll be protected. What you got? Yeah. I tell you one way to really do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Go by the dog shelter. Get an unhappy pit bull. Uh-huh. Leave him in the break room. Yeah. <laughs> when, when they open that door. <laughs> yes. I like this one. Put, put, the, put Bill on the inside. Yeah. Just turn the temperature down yeah. just a little bit so he can survive. Hey, hey. The- I'm going to tell you. So he's in the fridge? Yes. No, no, no. Pit bull. Put him right there in the break room. Uh, oh, okay. They've been walking in there gracefully because they've been eating your stuff every day. Cool. This going to halt that walk. <laughs> Tell me what you got. Okay, Junior, Junior, I got Hurry. to piggyback this one because I've done this one before. Our dog name is Chopper. Uh-huh. I put it in a Ziploc bag and put Chopper's sweet treats on there. But it backfired on me because my son, Jordan, and put some of Chopper's sweet treats in there and got all confused with my son. <laughs> I got one right, all right quick. come on as we go, Steve. You ready? Come Ten on. Ten seconds. Uh-huh. Put your whole lunch in a pamper. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today's subject. I need to help this poor child. Uh, Right now, the nephew is in the building with today's prank phone call. Nephew, what do you have for us today, sir? Girl, I got that HPP. HPP? HPP. P. P. Husband, 
protection program. Whoa. Oh. Husband protection program. Let's go. Let's go, cat dog. Good afternoon. This is Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Um, my name is Josh. I'm with uh, HPP. Giving you a call. You are married to uh, Mr. Sean. Am I correct? Yes. You're with who now? I'm with HPP. We actually um, pick your husband up from his job today. I wanted to give you a call. Are you... Pick him up for what? Okay, you're, you're his wife, Morgan, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, actually, just wanted to make sure that he's okay and we're, we're worried Why about his well-being. Why would he not be okay? What happened? Well, nothing's happened as of right now. We've had a conversation with him and we've checked him out he's definitely okay okay but why why are you picking him up though i don't i don't understand why all right just 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 cal calm down hang on a second i got a couple questions for you your husband he is about what five nine correct yes right and you would agree that uh, sean weighs uh, about 175 pounds does that sound about right that he weighs uh, yes okay L here's another question now exactly morgan how tall are you i'm five nine as well okay and uh, if you don't mind, I know it's a little different type of question, but if you don't mind, how much do you weigh? I'm like 200. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What does is, what is, what is how much I weigh have to do with it? it I don't, what, what is wrong with him, and where is, why, where is he right now? We actually have him. We have him in our custody you right now. You have him where? We have him in our custody right now why? here at our headquarters at HPP. So headquarters? Head, what, is, what is a HPP? Ma'am, HPP is husband protection program husband protection i've never i have never heard of such a thing why why is he there well the problem we have and we've been getting some actual complaints or whatnot and not necessarily from him but that you've been bullying your husband okay you know what i'm at my job and i'm gonna need you to hold on one second so i can go in here what 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 did you say have you and uh, Sean had any arguments at all lately? Have we had? We're married. Have we had arguments? Of course you had arguments. What, what does that have to do with anything? Have you guys had any altercations? Any altercations? Yes. What kind of altercations? Have you been bullying your husband in a physical way? Have I been bullying him? Have you, bullying have him been, how? Have you been, have you what been the f*** are you talking him? about? Bullying him? For somebody to turn in and give us... Somebody who? 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 Because if it's him, you need to let me talk to him. I, I can't put him on. This is what I'm talking about. What, and this what is what you're talking you about? Do. You call me at my job, turn off some freaking HPP crap, and somebody turn somebody in for some arguing. We're married. Who do you freaking know who's married and does not argue? I understand you're mad, but it is my job to protect husbands that are getting bullied by their wives. This is not the exact protection for me. He is my husband. What, what the? Okay, let me speak to him. I'm not at liberty to let you speak to him right now. What you're not going to do is bully me as well. And I, I see what everybody's trying to bully you. I want to know what's going on and why you call me at my job with some crap about him being at some headquarters on HPP. I don't even know HPP is. Never heard of HPP. And my husband does not need protection from anybody, especially not me. It is husband protection program. You've been bullying your husband. You've been using bad language with your husband. How long? I don't know. You know I don't him. I don't want to talk to him. He's my husband. When he said I do, he said I do accept whatever she says to me, whenever she says it, and however she says it, and that's what the f he gets. And if he has a problem with arguing with me, he needs to stop his crap, and it won't be no argument. And you tell him that. You see, this is what we're talking about. This is why he's been picked up today and brought into our custody, so that he would be definitely protected from you. You know what? If he needs some protection and he's in your custody now, you can keep him there. How about that? Well, here's what we're going to do. Somebody's going to be picking you up, bringing you in, so we can have a conversation. Somebody with picking you. me up and bringing me nowhere. What the what, what do you think this is? We're bringing you in so we can have a you conversation anyway. with you. Let me explain something to you, ma'am. We will be bringing you in, having a conversation you're with you, and trying anywhere. to analyze you're going anywhere with you? You're going to be coming in, and you're going to do exactly you're what we tell you to do. I'm not going anywhere with anybody. I'm are you physically or mentally abusing your husband? You know what? You don't have to pick me up. Tell me where you are. I will come to you. You don't have to pick me up. I will, I will come down there. I will handle you and him at the same time. You tell me where... You are. This is what we're talking about. Where is I'm going to ask you a serious question. Is there, is there some type of consequence if he doesn't listen to you? Is there a consequence? I mean, I mean, uh, what, what are you doing? Are you treating your husband like a child? What are you doing to him? If he's acting like a child, he's going to get treated like a child. If, you, if he has a problem with how I treat him, you talk to him about how he acts. 
Let me ask you something, Ms. Morgan. What do you do for a living? I am head of security at this building, and they're about to call security on me because I'm loud in this room back oh, here. Oh, so you're head of security. So you know all about putting people in chokeholds and, and how to apprehend a person, don't you? That is my job. Yes, I do. So are you doing that at home? What? I'm not going to tell you again. I don't harm that man in any way. No way. Have I ever, would I ever, nor has he me. He needs to get his behind in his car and go back to work. We have bills to pay and don't have time for this crap. I got one more thing I need to say to you. Are you listening? You don't have nothing to say to me but that you're about to put my husband on his phone and let me talk to him about this I'm crap. Sean, Sean, yeah. sit down. Sit down, Sean. No, don't I, give him, hand him the phone. Let me talk. I need to understand where the heck this is coming from. Sit down, Sean. I got it. Let me finish the talk conversation with okay? No, you don't need to finish it. Let me finish with his Put him on the phone. Hello? Mm-hmm. I have one more thing to ask you. Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Are you listening? Go ahead. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your husband, Sean. <laughs> 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 Hello? Uh uh-uh. uh. You. <laughs> Forget you. Morgan, you there? I don't believe this crap. <laughs> where, you, where, you, where you at right now, man? I, I was worried about the people at your job. Where you at? I'm back here in this closet, <laughs> sweating like a freaking pig in heat, <laughs> dripping makeup everywhere. <laughs> I cannot believe this. <laughs> Oh, God, uh, man. Okay, baby, I got to ask you, what is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> you down with HPP? <laughs> you know like, me. too much. You know me. <laughs> Y'all got to give it to me now. You, you, you down with HPP? King, King of Pranks. 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 I'm trying to. Now, okay, let me ask y'all something. Tommy, don't don't oh, even ask me because I love it. You just ask but, me. You know, bro, and I appreciate that, that Jay. Okay. You know, I need that kind of love and support. Let me ask y'all something, though. Who is it with the, that you would, who is it that you think I can't prank? Give me that. Put me to a challenge. Obama. Who do you think I can't Obama. prank? Trump. <laughs> Obama. <laughs> Obama and Trump. Neither one of them. Michael but Jordan. Give me, I pr- you, whoa, 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 what? I'm just challenging Oprah. I got challenges for you. Mm-hmm. I'm not finna. I'm not okay. Okay, I'm not. First of all, I'm not finna prank Miss Oprah. She's saying my okay, flavor. Well, you know, flavor, hey, flavor. Hey, hey, Can you hey, prank? Man, what is you asking us to question for? If you don't like none of our answers, <laughs> he judging well, I ass. like Jordan. I could do Jordan. I could do flavor. Can't light do skin Tyler against Perry. Light skin. I, Tyler Perry. Nah, that's a Scared, possibility of another Scared job that one. right there. Yeah. That's, why, uh, why, you, why you doing people that you know might help me? Why you doing that? I mean, you said you tell me who, who you can't prank. And if I wanted to name who you could prank, it'd be easy. Can't prank, can't, bet you can't prank Will Packer. Will? I no, first wish of all, I would. You, you ain't going to be able to say, as soon as you say his exactly. name, he's going to know it's you. Yeah. So give Hello, can I speak to Will? Yeah, yeah tell me what you need. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, nephew. Coming Not up funny. next, it's uh, the strawberry letter for today. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's strawberry letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here today. Okay? Strawberry letter. That's what we have right now. (laughs) Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. (laughs) Morgan Freeman. All right, subject, I need to help this poor child. Dear Stephen Shirley, 13 years ago, I became friends with a newly married young couple at church. They have two children, and they are good, God-fearing people with large hearts. The only problem is that they are not book smart, and the wife is lacking in the common sense department, too. They both speak terribly, and their subject and verb agreement is always off. Their spelling is even worse. I hate to admit it, but when I first met this couple, my first impression was that they they both had learning disabilities when they were younger, and that's how they met. After knowing them a while, I know that's not true. 
The husband never graduated from high school, and the wife just recently got her GED. We are all in a church group, and we discuss family stuff. So since it's back to school time, we were all happy to see our children going back to the classroom. All of us except this one couple. They announced to the group that they plan to homeschool their eight-year-old this semester. Uh, everyone in the group started looking around, and we were all quiet. We left the church meeting, and before I could get in my house good, I had three messages from people in our group telling me I had to stop them or their child would be ruined for life. Since I'm the closest one to them, they suggested I tell them. How can I tell my friend that homeschooling her child may turn her child into a little dummy? Maybe I can talk to a counselor down at the school where the child is supposed to be enrolled. Or should I mind my own business, mind my business, and just pray that this turns out better than we expect it to? I feel like I owe it to the child to speak up. Thoughts? Okay. Now, you know you can't tell these people how to raise and educate their children. You know you can't do that. That would cause major problems. Uh, You can only suggest to them. You can only just try to help them in some way. You say they speak terribly. They don't have much common sense or book sense. You say they're good God-fearing people with large hearts. You said that in your letter. So hopefully these good God-fearing people with large hearts, they will welcome your advice and your suggestions Uh, But you can't go in there, you know, trying to take over and overstep. These are their children, not yours. Uh, Talking to the school counselor, telling the mom that the homeschooling will turn her child into a little dummy. That's very unacceptable. That's out of line, okay? As a friend, just try to help her maybe set up her homeschool procedure. You know, the processes, the things you have to go through to do that. You can contribute uh, and help the kids read and and uh, things like that. I, I think the fact that the mom just recently got her GED, I think that that means that she's trying to do better and she wants to do better and she wants to do better for her kids. Uh, so support her, encourage her, be a friend to her, but don't take over, get in there and, you know, yeah, you should mind your own business, uh, get all up in their business. Uh, she could end up resenting you and this couldn't, this wouldn't be good. Steve? I disagree. So damn what? Somebody got to say these babies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Somebody need to stop this before it happens. <laughs> Two ignorant ass people can't homeschool a baby. You just said she just recently got her damn GED and her husband just got here. They fought it. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're sitting up in here and you're sitting up here, Shirley. See, that's your problem, Shirley. You just you're a Christian and you always want to eh, do the right thing. Don't stay in it. Somebody got to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing we need is two more of them. <laughs> we got to get involved here. Be involved. You got to say these kids. This is not no time to be Christian. We ain't got time for that. They're all Christian. Listen to me. Them <laughs> doggone kids. You don't know nothing. You just said they talk ignorant at the church group. You just said they ain't got good sense. Now they finna homeschool some kids. And you sitting up in here, you scared they gonna send the kids off to school and, and not you gonna they gonna homeschool them and turn them into little dummies. I can promise you it's already too late. Mm. Them kids is already a product of them two parents. If we don't get them babies in school, we're going to have two more of them. Your church is finna be a congregation full of little dummies. All of them sitting over there don't know nothing. You sitting up in here complaining about this lady on the thing, uh, you know, you, I tell you what you better do. You better have some little ninjas dropping in at that home school, educating them kids when the parents send them to recess or something. That's <laughs> your Ooh, only you damn chance. He said ninjas. Yeah. I know. I got it. <laughs> yeah, me though. Ninja teachers. Like you said ninja. up here. You said in your letter that the only problem is that they not book smart and the wife is lacking in common sense. Damn. So you don't know nothing in books or life. What they finna tell these two kids? 
They are, both speak terribly, and their subject and verb agreement is always off. Hold now, on, Steve. Hold on. We'll have okay. part two right. of your response. We're talk about this subject and verb agreement is always <laughs> off. Yes. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 after the hour. Subject, I need to help this poor child. We'll be back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. I need to help this poor child. Got these uh, newlywed people at their church and they're God-fearing and large hearts. And the only problem <laughs> is they're not book smart and the wife is lacking in common sense department too. <laughs> uh, both of them speak terribly. And their subject and verb agreement is always off. Everybody happy because kids going back to school. Everybody in the little church group celebrating except these two. They done told y'all they fit in the homeschool. They two kids. Everybody in the group got quiet. Because they trying to figure out how is these two ignorant ass people <laughs> going to homeschool <laughs> these two little poor ass kids. Uh, That's what this letter's about. But let me focus on the line here. Shirley, I'm going to need your help right here because I'm going to prove to you mm -hmm. why these parents need to send their children to school. Okay. Shirley? Yes. Because the lady says they both speak terribly and their subject and verb agreement is always off. What that means is... The subject and the verb that they use in the same sentence never apply. Mm -hmm. So now, Shirley, you don't know what they're talking about, but I do. <laughs> so what I want you to do, Shirley, so I can prove my point, okay. that you need to get these kids' ass up into school. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the child of these little ignorant-ass parents. <laughs> now, I want you to ask me any question on any subject. Ain't got to be pertaining to a child or nothing. But I'm going to show you what it is to mean that your subject and verb don't agree and going to prove why they need to go to school. First question. All right. What time do you have to get up to go to school today? What what that is for? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, See, that means... Why do I have to get up on time to go to school? Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's See, what that uh -huh. means. Go ahead. Uh, what did you get for lunch today? What do you have for lunch today? I be finna, finna eat mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I be finna eat. I be what? <laughs> I be finna eat mine. Ooh, that's pain. Uh, did you lay your clothes out to go to school tomorrow? What you're going to wear? Cl clothes me to wear tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Close me to where to work. <laughs> okay, you're proving your point. No, come on, any question. I don't care what it is. It ain't got to be school. Oh, okay, yeah, Ask yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite TV show? TV and media watching up there for that thing. Mm. What? This evening. Okay. <laughs> get off in there, man. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. Way in there, Uh-huh. Let's get me yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why they ass need to be yeah. in school. Come on. What's your first and last name? My last name is Photo Photo. The first one was over with. These <laughs> <laughs> kids need to get to school. <laughs> Immediately. Stupid ass need to be in school. I'm talking about don't cool. get in these people business. You better say these damn babies. Mm -hmm. This ain't even funny. Go ahead, sure. No, it's 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 definitely not f funny. Um, okay, so um, oh oh, I know, I know. So what do you what did you learn today when you went to church? I for church and learned it that that lesson mm. for them. Mm. What? <laughs> How old did you say you were? I went to lesson for learned it. How? I learned it. it mm -hmm. I learned it, it that uh, the cross was up and Jesus was stuck on it. How old did you say you were? Fifteen. <laughs> what? The kid in this letter is eight. <laughs> this is what's going to happen if you don't get your ass in school. <laughs> <laughs> Two more questions. Okay. What's your favorite food? Pinto. Uh, <laughs> chips and cornbread. 
Oh, gosh. What's that? Chips and cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> Can you spell cornbread? Hell yeah. Okay, let's hear it. Corn bread. <laughs> C-O-R-N-B-E-D. Cornbread. <laughs> corn bed. Corn bed. Okay. You don't like corn bed? No, I, I like corn bread. Oh, uh-uh. see, oh, you fancy. <laughs> no. For that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you won't use all the letters in your words. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it goes. Yeah. That ain't that ain't for how I go for my mom and my daddy. My mom and my daddy told me school ain't that important. I don't think they said that, did they? <laughs> my mama just got her GED, and her cousin took the test for her. See, I looked at that positively. Oh, her cousin <laughs> her cousin took the test for her. <laughs> All right, Steve, Shirley, you've, pro- you've proved your point. That's why you got to get these kids in school. <laughs> yeah, A lot right. of yeah. kids that are homeschooled, that though, to be do well. Yeah. It's hard to listen to stupid uh, like I that. I know. Yeah, but my last mm-hmm. one right there. Had with my Our homeschool went to how you think that went. What? You did That's not. Like two I homeschooled Winton. <laughs> How you think that? All right, was. listen. You can post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram and Facebook at Steve Harvey FM. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We're going to do a quick, fast round of Ask the CLO, okay? All right, you can submit your questions to Steve at steveharveyfm.com. That's to the CLO. This one, Steve, is from Jewel in Norfolk, Virginia. Jewel says, I've been married for only three years, and my husband has one flaw that irks me. Whenever we're out, I can be in the middle of a conversation, and he's staring at a woman with a nice body walking by. (laughs) He also will smile and nod his head at a woman if he gets her attention. He says he's from the South, and that's how men and women greet each other. It really messes up my self-esteem when he does it. How can I get him to stop this? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to tell you get him to stop it, but let's talk about what you just wrote in first. You said, what irks me is I could be in the middle of a conversation. What is these conversations about? Because obviously he ain't paying attention. Oh, okay. Uh-uh. Really? Really? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Listen to me. I'm not. No, I'm not saying she's doing anything wrong. Oh, she's boring. I want y'all just stay with me. But you boring ass conversation. See. <laughs> and then here come this chick. Now the other reason, and the real reason is, mm. the reason he does it repeatedly is because there are no consequences for doing it. Yeah. Uh huh. All it do is irk you. Mm-hmm. You ha- he has no consequences. And you be an irk, guess what he done told you? I'm from the South. We gentlemen, we speaks to women. <laughs> okay. From, How you doing, from, ma'am? Yeah. Is yeah. that the truth? Is that the truth? Hell no. <laughs> okay. Madam. I'm telling you, that's what he done told her. Uh, and if you insane. ignorant enough to go with that, we from the <laughs> right. South. Everybody on this show from the South. <laughs> <laughs> but we got wives, man. We can't go do that. Marjorie walking around. Marjorie from the South, too. That's yeah. the damn problem. <laughs> so that wouldn't work. Carla from the South. That's the other damn problem. <laughs> Shirley country ad from the South, because she really from Arkansas. From Don't stop Chicago, all this Chicago born mess. Born and raised. <laughs> Thank you. Country ass. Well, your people wasn't from Chicago. <laughs> all, her, all her Nail people from Arkansas, and Not she the only my one people. from Chicago. My mom well, how she get up Arkansas? there? <laughs> all right, here we go with another question. Uh, This is from Sarah in uh, Terrell, Texas. She says, I am a 44-year-old woman dating a 36-year-old man. And a woman called me recently and said she uh, has been having unprotected sex with my man. My man acted shocked and said it's his crazy ex playing games. Needless to say, we haven't had sex since I got the call. I called his ex and invited her over so we could talk, but she swears she didn't call me. Should I keep trying to get to the bottom of this mess or tell this man to go find someone his age to play with? You call somebody to come over. Trying to get to the bottom of it, Steve. Well, the lady said she didn't have sex with him. So she's mm. just supposed to take her word. All right, we got to go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This is a, a roundtable discussion today is who told on you back mm. in the day that made you get the worst, <gasps> the absolute worst behind whooping you've ever gotten in your life? 
Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Your mama could get the news, and Junior and I talked about this. Your mama could get the news. We had no internet. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the phone. <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. There was no texting. Mm -hmm. But by the time Annalie Brown got to that house off that bus, she mm -hmm. knew everything mm -hmm. that went down. Yeah. I don't know how she knew how it. she knew it. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. She started off like, so um, what you doing downtown today? Uh, yeah, I'm like, how the, uh -huh. how the hell you know that? Yeah. How the hell you know yeah. I was down yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. How do you know that information? I ain't told nobody. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I ain't told no nobody. social media. No there social was no media. social media. Nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, she got it immediately, well, though. Little Rabbit's punk ass. <laughs> Who? Uh. Little Rabbit's punk ass. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> this little... <laughs> This little, oh, oh I want to say the B careful, word careful. so bad. Oh, careful. This little you can't. B told Miss Patterson uh -huh. that I was the one <laughs> that put the firecrackers in her tulips in her front yard oh. and lit the four firecrackers <laughs> and blew the damn tulips up. <laughs> Little rabbit punk ass told me. Well, sure. Miss Patterson went across the street and told my mama. Uh -huh. Man, I got my ass. <laughs> How long was it, Uncle? How long, How long was the, the beating? Yeah. I, I, it felt like about 15 minutes. Oh, now, can I ask the question, did you do yes. it? Yes. Did yeah, you do yeah, it? Yeah, did, 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 did. You know he did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you did it. In this one well, what, what, what made you do that, like right? her, man? She was hateful, man. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay, man. Like if I football rolled in the yard. Oh, that was her. No, no, no. You can't. You don't go on that grass. She go down there and get the football. Take it in the house. Oh. It won't throw it back to y'all. Oh, no. no. <laughs> baseball going her yard. Don't go in my yard. I tell you, mom and daddy. Then she come down here and get the baseball. And yeah. roll it down the street. Now we got to hear him get down there for get, get to that gun. damn sewer. <laughs> <laughs> you old evil ass. He took pride in her yard. Uh, and it wasn't that, was that big of a yard, was it? It wasn't that big of a yard. Yeah, it was she ain't there but eight tulips, but I couldn't get all eight of them lit in time. So I only could do four. I had timed it. Mm. Oh my God! Anybody tell on you, Shirley? Yeah, my mom's ex-boyfriend, uh, my mom's boyfriend at the time. Uh -huh. She was dating this man, uh -huh. and he was coming in to see us from the front yard. Uh -huh. And there was a phone booth not really far from my house at the time. Remember the old phone yeah, booth? Yeah, the old phone booth. Yeah. So my cousin and I were in there playing on the phone, like we were talking. So he went in the house and told my mom that we were in the phone booth calling some boys. <laughs> What? Yeah, and we weren't. <laughs> All I, the next thing I knew, I'm getting dragged out. <laughs> At the phone booth? Yes. Yes. That was the first time I I saw stars. I literally, my mom beat the crap that's, that's out of Jesus, me. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we weren't even doing that. We weren't calling yeah, boys. You was calling boys. No, I, I, believe you was calling I wasn't, boys. That, not that time. Not that time. <laughs> not that time. <laughs> All right, we got to go. Uh, oh, yeah, well, I got so many <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so guys, have you ever eaten a meal that just brought you to tears? It was so good. Yes. I mean, have you ever done that? I'll tell you what's gotten close. What? When we were all in Paris, that baked oh, potato yeah. Ooh, with that know, loaded with caviar. caviar. Yeah, with that caviar, that yes. It had that me so emotional. <laughs> yes, it did. It, you all right, okay, it, well, wait a minute. Was, so good. <laughs> Hold your tears. It was good. Hold your tears, baby. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so some of us have eaten a meal that has brought us to tears or at least come close to bringing us to tears. Or maybe, who knows, it was the bill at the end of the meal that made you cry. Well, anyway, there was this old elderly man uh, in China. He's been diagnosed with an extremely rare condition. It's known as crocodile tear syndrome. I'm like, is this for real? Yes. <laughs> you got this? Yeah. Oh, he right. just started he crying when he eat. Cool you got it too, Junior? I didn't know I bit that. my mama oxtails and it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it causes him to cry every time he eats. <laughs> and it's ruining his social life. Doctors reported that his nerve fibers are misdirected and they interfere with his uh, uh, salivary glands. So when he smells or tastes food, it makes him cry. 
And, and oh, how very he funny. Keep, no, it's he not can't, Nesto. He can't keep chewing. He can't, he can't keep doing the same thing. I can't just keep eating like this. I'm just going, oh, my God. This, this is a man I cried doing China. sex like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for a round of Would You Rather out the gate. You want to pick it blindly? Nah, that don't work out yeah. for us. That good. <laughs> I loved it. It. <laughs> it, it. it hasn't for me, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Would you rather work and you're cleaning up toxic waste or would you rather work as a mortician's assistant? Yeah, I'm gonna clean up the toxic waste. Uh, yeah, I'm not Yo. gonna do that. Really? I'm, yeah, I don't no, like dead waste. people. Oh, no, no, I'm going down that damn funeral home. I'm not yeah, in that waste. Yeah. I'm not in that waste. I'm sorry. You know, what? you t- talk toxic waste. They just talking about toxic material. They're not talking about like sugar, honey, iced tea. Not that. Because I have toxic waste myself. <laughs> You familiar with it? I'm very familiar with that. So I'm, I'm accustomed yeah. to that. I deal with toxic yeah. waste every time I go in there. Oh gosh! I know, I know, I know them here well. Mine toxic. Oh gosh! Yeah, so I'm not even going. I'm not. That's not a fear of mine. I'm just I've been assisting around. the mortician, though, right? No, I'm not yeah, cutting, cutting vacuuming it out, nobody sucking out no guts. No. I'm not finna do none of that. No, I ain't doing that. No, I'm just finna you glue your eyes shut, put no yeah. lipstick on you. I ain't finna do that, though, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just death. <different. laughs> <laughs> quit playing. You ain't yeah, changing no clothes or nothing, huh? No, <laughs> no. Same I'm outfit the same on. outfit he died in. <laughs> I'm gonna be the worst mortician. I'm not doing all that. Yeah. The he looks. The he looks so swollen. Yeah, oh that's how they God. bought him in. Yeah, <laughs> he looked decomposed. Hey, yeah, that's hey, that's how they minute. bought him in. He got a, he got a yeah. Pepsi in his hand. Oh he still gonna have that's, everything. That's he how had. they bought him car in. Keys on, car <laughs> keys gonna be in there. Why is all this mud under his fingernails? That's how they bought him <laughs> in. Did you even close his eyes? So at least that, he was eyes was open when they bought him <laughs> in. <laughs> We not doing all that. I'm not Why embalming. Why at the funeral looking at us, though? Why None of that? that. Y'all, closed casket, I told you. <laughs> the sandwich he was eating, Uncle, gonna be in his hands, gonna be in the casket. <laughs> you are crazy. All right. Uh, the family is here you, to see I remember when I bought him that sweatshirt. Thank, thank you. <laughs> be grateful. All right, one more if we can get to it quickly. Uh, would you rather get struck by lightning or picked up by a tornado? <laughs> we know what your answer is, Tommy. Tornado, struck by lightning Tommy? or picked up by a tornado? Hey. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Know how far I got to the yeah. How, far, how yeah. far does tornado taking me? Yeah. You don't know. Tornadoes, they yeah. unpredictable. Yeah, I don't know what that's going to be, but I tell you what, when you get hit by that lightning, you usually don't be right when you come to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm fine that's today's that. round of Would You Rather. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, our last break of the day. It's been a good day. It's that's been, great. yeah, it's been a really good day. We got through it, had some yes. fun. Um, and now, day. Yeah. yeah. Hump day. Hump day. <laughs> that used to be Steve's <laughs> favorite commercial right you there. <laughs> <laughs> that camel. <laughs> All right, Steve, it's um, time for you to take us home with some of your closing remarks, as always. Uh, you know, uh, as, as I've decided to do a lot uh, since I came off my vacation, was to just try to share with you all a lot of things that I learned spiritually over my vacation. I, I said this is one of the most spiritual awakenings I've had uh, ever. And, and I really learned a lot spiritually. And I just wanted to share with y'all because there's so many people out there who love God. There's so many people out there who know God. And there's a lot of people out there that's, that's trying to figure out where God at. There's some people out there thinking God that forgot about them. And, I, you know, I just want to tell you something, that that's not true. God ain't forgot about you. Somebody said one time, I keep praying for something and it don't happen. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did it, did it not happen the way you wanted it or it's not happening? Because usually it comes out to be not the way you want it. But if you look closely, 
closely, something is in the process of being worked out. We just get impatient with the process. How many times have I done that, wanted something from God my way? With, and I was so focused on it happening my way that I didn't look around and realize he's actually operating and working something out. And if I would just look closely and show a little bit more gratitude instead of complaining about what I don't have my way, find out that his way is probably better than the one you got. Because see, let, let me... Let, let me tell you what loses a lot of people. You know, when, when things going really, really good in your uh, life and you feel like you're blessed, then you just feel like God is smiling on you. But then life happens. You run into some rough patches on this journey. You have to understand that when you hit rough patches in your life, that God's still smiling on you. It's just that sometimes... Allowing these adversities that come into your life, some of, some of your verse, adversities are allowed because it pulls you closer to God. Some of us need adversity to get closer to God. So, some of us don't understand that the adversities that we're facing in our life, sometimes they just, they, they seem, they're covered in a mystery. But God, everything that happens to you if you love God like so many of you do, if you want a relationship with God like so many of you do, it ends up working out for you one way or the other. You know, you might be asking God to save, make this man do right. Well, guess what? If the man is not right for you, why would God make him do right and he ain't the one for you? Sometimes, man, you got to go through some adversity because it pushes you closer to God. It's like the other day I was talking about people get mad at people because they go to jail and they find Christ. Whoa, hold up, partner, partner. Key word, found Christ. What what difference do it make how they found him? It, it, it's, it's not you can decide how God is found. I found God, I get <laughs> sad to say this, but but it's true. I, I get pushed closer to God when I get in the most trouble. Sad to say, but that's what's happened. I'm just now learning to stay close to him in the good times. So when the bad times come, I ain't that far away. I had to make that decision myself. So when you see God in the good times, you also got to see God's face in the hard times. Because this too shall pass. You're just going through a process. Everybody's life has to have adversity in it so you can appreciate the good times. You got to have adversity because it makes you draw closer to God. You got to have adversity because you need to become experienced at what it is you're going through. So when it happens to you again, you know how to handle it better. Because it's called life. It's just going to keep happening. And see... A lot of times, man, people, they look at things so wrong. You know, people get in their life, they get real busy bustling around and they're trying to accomplish things through your own strength and your own ability. Well, let me tell you something about when you accomplish something through your own strength and ability. Sometimes you succeed rather well and other times you fail. But you don't want to miss what life is really about. And that's having a collaboration with God, man. You want to have a relationship with God so you don't get so full of yourself like all your blessings is because of something you did. You ain't did nothing. Oh, you might have worked hard, but you can't make blessings come your way. Do you know if you had the ability to do this, you know what your life would look like? And quit looking at other people and talking about, man, God, are we doing something for them? Man, I don't get this, and I sometimes I wanted this, and I get this. It's called favor. Favor ain't fair. Favor's not giving out. Say favor's giving it out just because God is good. We have all benefited from favor. If we've all received favor, we had no business getting. That's what grace and favor is, man. Y'all come on. So I'm just trying to get y'all to just think about it, man. Form a relationship with God, man. It really wants me to tell you that. Y'all have a great weekend, okay? We're getting close to it. Have one. <laughs>
For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 